What's up friends? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing well. I have another favorite style of video for you guys today. I've seen this kind of video done all around YouTube and I definitely wanted to take part. This is going to be my three favorite products from three favorite brands. I know. And what brands did I select today? I selected the Luxury Trinity. We're going to be doing Chanel, Dior, and Tom Ford. So if you guys want to hear my top three favorite products from each of those brands, then keep watching. And if you're new here, then welcome. Thank you for stopping by. My name is Sophia, and this is my channel that focuses on all things beauty and luxury. I upload new content every single week on new beauty releases, especially in kind of like the luxury and high-end category of makeup. I also do luxury fashion hauls and lifestyle. So if that sounds of interest to you, then you're in the right place, my friend. Hit that subscribe button to join our fam because we have a lot of fun on this channel and you can also click the notification bell to hear about every time I upload a new video. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I am definitely open to doing more of these videos, so comment down below if you guys want me to do more brands next time. I'm going to be linking all the products in the description box down below and I will also be applying these products to my face as we go so that you guys can see all of these products in action. So without further ado, let's Let's get into it. All right, party people, let's get into it. I picked three products from three brands because I felt like three was the perfect number where I would be challenged to really narrow it down to what are my favorites, what do I feel like I use the most, and then also sort of that element of what is the most unique maybe amongst other products that are in my collection. And the first brand that I'm going to do is Chanel. Woo! It was difficult to pick three favorite products from Chanel. It's funny because I mostly have started using a lot of Chanel products maybe within the past, I don't know, year or two. You all have recommended so many good things to me. And the first product is a product that you all recommended to me and it is none other than the Chanel Le Beige Foundation. I needed to include this. This is one of my favorite foundations in my collection. What I really like about this and kind of what I go for in foundations are something that is super lightweight but still has decent coverage. I don't have a ton of imperfections that I need to cover up but I do have some rosacea, I have redness and I want my skin to be glowy but still look natural. I don't want to really have to cake it onto my face and this foundation it gives me that medium coverage and it gives me so much glow but with a really nice lightweight moisturized skin like feel. It's incredibly glowy. It is called the healthy glow foundation so that makes a lot of sense. It kind of reminds me of my beloved Pat McGrath foundation but a little bit more moisturizing. Like I feel like that foundation has more of a special event sort of airbrushed look that it gives your skin whereas this gives you more of that everyday healthy kind of glow. I like it in the winter. I like it in the summer. I would say the only thing I don't like about this is that there is a lot of fragrance in it so that's the only thing I don't really like about it but I can kind of get past it during the application process just because I love it so much. I definitely struggled to choose between this one and the water fresh tint because the water fresh tint from Chanel it's probably a more unique product arguably but I cannot deny friends this is the one that I use the most. This is the foundation that I'll take with me when I'm going on a trip on a vacation etc. Like it's one of my holy grail foundations now and I owe it all to you all for recommending it to me so thank you to you guys. I feel like eyeliners don't often make it into these videos because they're not as sexy as like a highlighter or a foundation or an eyeshadow palette but I feel like these eyeliners are kind of like the unsung hero of many of the looks that I do on this channel. These are the Chanel Yo Waterproof Long Lasting Eyeliners. There's a couple of things that I absolutely adore about these. The first one is they are so long lasting, incredibly long lasting. I've done so many swatch tests with these and you really like you you can rub that swatch, it will not come off, but then they're still relatively easy to remove at the end of the day. I need something that lasts all day. I don't like it when my eyeliner kind of fades or smudges because it makes me look tired and it makes me look a little bit aged. So I love the fact that these are so long lasting. The other thing that I like about these is that the tip is just so not so small that it's going to break off when you use it, but it's just the right size to kind of really get in there close to the lash. It's just perfect. And I I also feel like even though they 
come in this swivel stick format. They don't dry out. I've had a lot of these guys since the beginning of last year. I use them all the time and they aren't drying out. The other thing that I like about these is the color range. The color range, I mean, what, what else would we expect from Chanel? It's very, very chic and sophisticated. Some of my favorite colors are kind of in the purpley and pinky tones. So I'll list some of them down below. One of my favorite colors is called Cassis. It's like a deep, rich, aubergine type of color. The color that I'm wearing today is called Prune Intense, so it's a little bit of like a lighter, more reddish tone purple that I thought would look good with this eye look today. And then I also really love the shade Eros because it's kind of like a reddy pink that goes absolutely perfect with any of those like Charlotte Tilbury pillow talk kind of looks. These are just so good. They really, really do stand out amongst a lot of the other eyeliners that are in my collection. And they're just so incredibly easy to use. And then my last top product from Chanel are these. These are, I always forget the name, they are the La Rouge Duo Ultra Tenue Long Lasting Lipsticks. I am wearing the shade Light Brown today. This is such a good nude if you want something, you know, kind of great for like fall and winter. What is so great about these? These are the best liquid lipsticks that I've ever tried. And I feel like a lot of people don't talk about them. Although I feel like liquid lipsticks are having a resurgence right now. So I bet that these are gonna have a little bit of a rejuvenation over the next couple of months. The way that these work is very simple. You apply the liquid lipstick on one side of the tube. That is the color. And then on the other side, you have this beautiful, this chic, this very elegant lip gloss that isn't too sticky. It's not so thin that it's gonna wear away but not so thick that once again, it's gonna be kind of sticky and cakey on the lips. And it's just amazing how these don't dry out, they don't cake up. Once the gloss wears away, you really can just keep layering on more and more pigment. And for whatever reason, it just doesn't get gross. Like it looks so, so good. It's such an elegant looking lip. I don't even know how to describe, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. You can wear the lipstick part on its own, but it has a slight little bit of tack. Like it's really meant to be layered together. But as you can see, the gloss isn't so high shine where you look like you're wearing lip gloss. So if you like more of that sort of natural look to the lips, just a natural hydrated look, you just put a little bit of the gloss. And I have the shade light brown, as I mentioned, but I also have the shades here, burning red and shocking pink. So these are the three that I have. They have so many good, like really natural wearable colors. If you want something long lasting, but you often get annoyed with sort of dryness of the lipsticks, them getting crusty on your lips, etc., then you need to check these out. So those are my top three favorites from Chanel. The next brand that we're gonna be covering is none other than Dior. If you are new here, I covered Dior Beauty a lot on this channel. It is one of my favorite brands ever. And I don't think anybody's gonna be surprised that the first product that I adore from Dior is their eyeshadow formula. Sure, I know that some quints are maybe a little bit better than others. Some color stories I like a little bit more than others, but I love the Dior eyeshadow formula. I love it because it's very effortless. It's very soft. I know a lot of people, they criticize these types of formulas for not being pigmented enough, but I think for me, I'm not going for a super saturated look when I use these types of shadows. I want something super soft, super airbrushed, very effortless. And I think once you approach the shadows in that manner, you sort of get it. In fact, a lot of times when I'm using these shadows as I'm doing the look, I'm thinking, I don't know if this is going to look good. And then at the end, I look at my eye look, everything is so diffused and soft and satiny. I don't know why I ever doubted it. It always looks so good in the end. These types of shadows, they're great if you just want to do a one and done. If you just want to use one or two shades, you can do that. But then you also can kind of like build up some more depth in a very sort of sophisticated way with the other shades. These are the two favorites that I picked out. I would say these are my two favorite Dior Quins. And forgive me, friends, I picked two. Okay, not one because one of them is limited edition. That one is this one. This is from the Dior Riviera collection that launched last year. It is still available. I don't know how it's still available. I don't know how it's still available. This is one of the best ones that I've ever tried. I really like this one because it's neutral, 
but it has a little bit of intrigue to it, right? We've got kind of these beautiful rosewood tones. We have a peach. We have a bright gold to kind of brighten and open up the eye, maybe as a bit of a topper in the center of the lid. We have this really beautiful soft. It's kind of like a purpley brown, like it's neutrals, but with a little bit of color. It's such a sophisticated look for all year round. I also feel like the quince that came out in this collection, they have a little bit more of a metallic finish to them. You know, some quince they're a little bit more satin and some are a little bit more metallic and I like the fact that this one it is a little bit more metallic and the one matte shade it is a true matte so you can kind of do a little bit more with the palette my other favorite one which is a part of the classic line and I know a lot of people love this quint it is soft cashmere I don't even normally go for cool tones but I have to say this is one of my favorite cool tone palettes that I have in my entire collection I think what I really like about this is that it's not quite brown, it's not quite gray. It's like a grayish, a grayish taupe. This shade right here is really the stunner shade. This is one of the most metallic shadows that I've seen in a Dior Quint. It really just brightens up the entire look and gives me that pigment that sometimes I want from maybe a Natasha Denona palette, but I'm able to blend it together with these other soft, beautiful eyeshadows from Dior. If you didn't watch my recent declutter video, then you might not know I have every single shade of the Dior Forever Couture Luminizers. These are the powder highlighters from Dior and they are just, mm, they're just chef's kiss. I love them so much. Obviously I bought every single shade. I like to have a little wardrobe of my Dior highlighters. And because I have these highlighters, this is what is preventing me from buying so many of the new releases out there because I don't really need much more than this, to be honest with you. I think this is maybe a baked formula. That's kind of what it looks like. I have the shade Golden Glow here. This is the shade that I recommend if you just want a very basic kind of golden, almost champagne-like highlight. I actually have a full video, full review of all of the shades, swatching them, comparing them, applying them to my face so you can kind of see how these shades look like on my skin tone. And I also share with you guys there which shade I think is good for which skin tones and which one you should get just kind of depending on your preferences. So if you guys are interested in these, I do have a full video describing them, reviewing them, etc. But man, these are just, I don't even know what else to say about these. They're just very, very lovely highlighters. They're a little glowier than, let's say, the Chanel Luminizers or maybe a Guerlain highlighter, the Meteorites, etc. But they're not so blingy like maybe a Pat McGrath or a Natasha Denona highlighter. They're just a really beautiful every day in between in a variety of gorgeous colors. I also pulled out the Rosewood one here to show you guys because I think that this is a very unique color in my collection and I like to use the deeper colors in the collection almost as glowy blush toppers. I'll go in with a buffing brush, maybe like the buffing brush from Sonia G and I just buff it over my my blush. It looks so good. These are just so, so fun to play with. These are a very perfect, like solid highlighter recommendation for me. If one of my friends was saying, Sophia, you know, I want a very minimalist luxury collection of makeup, I would probably recommend Golden Glow from the Dior Couture highlighters. I really wanted to include a complexion product from Dior. I have a couple of their foundations that I really like, but the thing that I like the most from the complexion category from Dior is actually a product that I used up and am going to repurchase very soon. And it is none other than the Dior Forever Concealer. This concealer was recently reformulated and I already used up the one that I had. So I am going to be repurchasing this pretty soon once I finish up a couple other of my concealers. But I still wanted to talk about it in this video because this is such a fantastic concealer. It's one of my favorites that I've tried. It's probably my favorite complexion product that I have tried from Dior. I like their foundations, but this really does it for me. It also works really great if you want to kind of apply it all over the face as a foundation. If you're a little bit more of a minimalist and you don't really need to cover everything up, this was very much marketed as something that you can really play around with, whether it's in the under eyes, it's kind of as a foundation, maybe sheared out. What I like about this is kind 
kind of similar to what I like about the Chanel Le Beige foundation that I talked about earlier. It's just very glowy and blurring and moisturizing. It doesn't dry out. I would say this concealer, it's not as, you know, juicy and glowy from like a moisturized look as maybe the Chanel Le Beige foundation is. This sort of sets down a little bit. So if you're worried about it not setting down or being sticky, it's definitely not like that. But I feel like this time after time, even though it was released a couple of years ago, it continues to be on so many people's like best of list, favorite concealers list. It is just so good. So I definitely wanted to give it a shout out in this video. Those are my three favorite products from Dior. And now we have Mr. Tom Ford. You know, I I was doing my declutter the other day. I was swatching all of my bronzers. I was looking at the different tones. And then I came across this. This is the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer. This is in the shade Terra. This is a great bronzer. As I was swatching all of my bronzers, I realized this actually, it's a pretty unique color, at least for the bronzers that are in my collection. It has this very unique kind of soft neutral tone about it. I know that this isn't a new product. Everybody knows about this product. But listen, this is one of my favorite products from Tom Ford. I have a lot of favorites, but this is one of the ones that I definitely wanted to call out. The shade, it's not too yellow. It's not too pink. It's not too orange. It's really like right there in the middle where I think that anybody that has a light to maybe medium light complexion is really going to get along well with this. It also just blends like a dream. You guys are going to see from the demo. It just kind of melts into the skin, blends beautifully into the Chanel the beige foundation that I'm wearing today. It doesn't get cakey. It lasts all day. I tried this because everybody kept saying it was so good and it really is such a good product. I don't really talk about it on my channel that much, maybe because it is kind of a classic product, so to speak. But once again, if I had a friend that asked me like, what's a really good solid bronzer, I would recommend this because even though it's expensive, I know that it's gonna work for so many different people and it's such a great formula. Next, we have a product that I use almost every single day. I don't talk about it that much on my channel because it's one of those like boring things that you use all the time, like your brow pencil. But I actually finished one of these up last year. That's how much I used it. And it is the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate Contour Highlight Duo. Now, I'm sorry, friends. I really don't use the highlighter balm all that much. Please, Tom Ford, just make this without the highlighter balm. I don't feel like that many people use it. Comment down below. I would love to know if you use the highlighter balm super often because to me, the highlighter balm, it's just a balm. It looks like every other balmy highlighter that I have. Whatever. What we're really talking about here is the contour cream. It's so great. I don't need another contour. This one and the Westman Atelier stick are really the only two that I use. I like the fact that the Westman Atelier comes in a stick format. This I like because it just melts into the skin. It is a cream formula that blends really well into the other products that you have on your face. But for whatever reason, it just doesn't get sticky. You would think that it would because it's this balmy formula, but it doesn't get sticky. My hair never sticks to it. It just looks super natural. It gives me that nice, soft kind of warmth and chisel and definition to my face. I am using today the shade 0 0.5 because that's kind of my perfect everyday shade. I think that is the lightest shade if I'm not mistaken, but I also like the shade 1.0. That's what I will use maybe in the evening if I'm going out, I want a little bit more of like a dramatic contour. That is the shade that I used up last time. So I kind of go between each of those. In fact, if you guys are interested in maybe some more detailed swatches, application, review, wear test, etc., I do have a review of this product comparing it to the Danessa Myricks Contour Balm, I think it's called. I do a very in-depth review comparing those products and you guys can see tons of swatches to figure out like which tone is good for you amongst those two brands and maybe which formula you might prefer but this is it it's not an exciting product but it's such a big staple in my collection and even though it is stupidly expensive like all Tom Ford products are I just keep repurchasing it and then my last favorite from Tom Ford has to be none other than the Tom Ford wet dry 
formula. I would be surprised if somebody did a top three of Tom Ford and they didn't put the wet dry formula in their favorites. I mean, I know there's a lot of great products from Tom Ford, but I love eyeshadow and I really, really love my Tom Ford wet dry formula quads. I know that he's come out with a lot of new formulas, limited edition quads. He came out with the creme formula last year. I reviewed that for you all. I like that formula, but I think nothing really beats a classic color story in the wet dry formula from Tom Ford. I have to remind myself that I really like these palettes whenever I see a lot of these new limited edition ones coming out. It's like, whoa, pump the brakes. You like these. Don't forget that the wet dry formula is super good. And you know what? I didn't really like these until maybe a year or two ago. I know when I first got these, I really didn't understand the formula at all. This is the kind of formula where similar to the Dior, I'm applying it to my lids and it has such a soft airbrush kind of quality to it that I don't see the pigment applying to my eyes like I would maybe a Natasha Denona shadow or a Viseart shadow, for example. Love those types of eyeshadows, but this is very different. This is the kind of thing that it's very effortless. It's for a different type of customer that's only applying up to four shadows on their lid. So this is the kind of thing that you can just take a big, you know, chunky eyeshadow brush and really just go all over the lid with even just one shade. And it looks absolutely beautiful. It doesn't highlight any sort of wrinkles on the lids, any kind of texture on the lids. It really just gives this soft airbrushed effect. They almost blend themselves as opposed to you having to kind of create a shape and sculpt the eye. This is for more of a like quicker, simpler, easy, effortless type of application. And I think that's why people often go towards luxury makeup because it's a little bit more effortless. And so what is the color that I'm wearing on my eyes today? This is the shade Honeymoon. This is one of my favorites, especially more of the neutral category. It's such a sexy Tom Ford, like Italian evening type of palette. You can use the two lighter shades if you wanna do more of like a day look, for example. But I love the mixture of these like golden browns with the deeper purple and burgundy. It really is my color story. My other favorite one, actually I think this is probably my most favorite wet dry formula quad from Tom Ford, is the Daydream palette. And I didn't apply this one today, friends, because I can't really find this one anymore. I bought this one off of eBay. If I can find some, I'll link them down below. But this is just such a beautiful purple palette. And I'm not even a purple palette person, but this, is super duper special. Whenever I put this on my eyes, you guys are always asking me like, what is that palette that you have on your eyes? It is the Daydream palette. This is just so gorgeous. I love this formula. So glad that I kind of adapted to these types of shadows and these palettes are just getting so much more love in my collection since I first got them. All right, friends, that's all I have for you guys today. There are so many other good products from these brands, but I really tried to narrow it down to just three from each. Now it is your turn. Sound off in those comments down below and let me know what are your favorite products from each of these brands. Also, I would love to know what other brands do you want me to cover next time I do one of these videos. I'm thinking maybe like Pat McGrath, Natasha Nona, maybe Guerlain, maybe Charlotte Tilbury. So tell me in the comments which other brands you would like me to share my favorites in the next video. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And with that, friends, I hope that you are having a fantastic day and I will see you in my next one. Goodbye.